Hey people, Frank Cement here. I'm shooting a video on Scorpion today. Um, mocking up the tracks. Showing you guys how I'm going to make them. Uh, pretty simple design I think I got. Uh, let's take a look at it. I'm using the chain to attach the track plates, which are these parts right here and I'm bolting them together to where you will be able to service the tracks. That way if the chain ever wears out you could unbolt all the track plates and replace the chain or if a track messes up you can unbolt the whole track plate and replace it with another one. So show you how I got it. You can see these are the wheels I'm going to be using. They're just push more wheels, plastic wheels. Let's see if they... Yeah, bought them at Home Depot. <laughs> bought a lot of the stuff at Home Depot. Be amazed what you can make with the stuff that comes out of there. <laughs> okay, this part of the track here is where the tire is going to be riding on. It's going to ride on the outside. Of the track. Uh, the next spot is about an inch in. The well, this part's going to be two inches wide, and then an inchward, an inch inward, is going to be where the chain's going to connect to the track plate by bolts. There are two bolts per track plate, uh, five sixteenths by 18 thread half inch bolt standard just a regular bolt I didn't get the uh, hardened steel ones I don't think I need them so one inch in is going to be where the track attaches to and then the rest of it is going to be for the track guides to keep the track centered And let's take it apart so these parts come off. These are whoops. These are two inch wide flat stock, one eighth thick. Uh, the track guides are three sixteenths thick by one inch. Everything's falling. Thing's got some weight to it. Ah. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Take two. <laughs> I got the track secure by pegs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get back to it. Uh, okay, the tires, what they roll on. This part of the track is two inch by one eighth two inch by one eighth flat stock steel that's what the tires are going to be rolling on on the outside of the track and if you notice the track plates don't extend all the way out there's going to be a reason for that I'll explain that next or later on okay measurements on these are two inches wide so, if you notice, the flat plates only go halfway, and then uh, this part here is 9 inches. Okay. An inchward in is where the track's attached to by a bolt, 5 sixteenths by 18, I think, bolt, standard bolt, not grade 5 or grade 8 just a regular old bolt with a nut and a washer put the washer on there the washer is going to help with the spacing for the chain keeps the chain from collapsing so we go inward uh, two inches inward use that for a reference this is the center of the track which is where the guides are going to be the guides are going to be made out of 
three sixteenths by one inch flat stock steel. Oh, here we go again. So that's pretty much the track. <laughs> pretty simple. Get this stuff out of the way. I'll flip it over. Show you the other side. Okay, the bolts that hold the chain on got a half inch head. Regular old bolt. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a quarter inch steel stock to make cleats. One cleat's going to go from the center of this bolt all the way over to the center of this bolt. Find another piece. Okay, I got the, the quarter inch round bar, this is what this is, I got plenty of this, I'm going to make the track cleats, this is the bottom side of the track, I'm going to make cleats, I'm going to make a, a center cleat from bolt to bolt, these bolts will be welded onto the plate, give you an idea, well, they'll be connected, and then when these are on here, That's where these come in. <laughs> these will pretty much extend out as a V. They'll be welded to the center bolt too. And they'll come out and over to make a, a half a diamond, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but that's how the cleats are going to be. Uh, pretty aggressive design for the cleats but I don't have any other way to do it and I gotta use cleats to compensate for spacing for the bolt I don't want just the bolts riding on the ground uh, I want the, the cleats riding on the ground too it'll take a while for the cleats and the bolt head to wear off to where you have to rebuild the track plate. Like I said, the track plate's going to be serviceable to where you can unbolt it, do what you need to do, and put it back on. Well, that's what I'm going to do for the track. So when I come back, I'll have both of those track plates welded together and bolted onto the chain, and then. Uh, Okay, I'm back. I got the track plates welded together. Let me show you what I got. I'm down in the basement because it's like 10:30 at night. Can't videotape outside, but this is what I got done. It's working at night outside, fighting off the bugs. Uh, two prototypes uh, they're pretty much identical except for the cleats so I'll get to that in a minute uh, okay let's start with what I use and how I put it together the center bar is eight inches wide uh, these end plates where the tire rolls on the track plate are two inches they only overlap the center plate halfway which gives the track another inch on each side which makes the track 10 inches wide so get to how it looks underneath in a minute uh, then you got one inch spacing for attaching the chain and then two inches and then you got the track guides in the center same on the other side then you got the bolts are welded into this plate so they can't come out and then the nut and the washer one thing I notice playing with it I have to 
find a way to secure this link better to the plate. The washer tends to not hold it good enough. It'll hold it in the place, but the, the link will slide forward and back. When that happens, it'll lock up or bind the link where it's closing up on. So i got to figure something out. The solution will probably be bending the link to where it has uh, a more contour around the bolt so it doesn't slip. Or I'll just tack weld the link on each side. If I need to do maintenance, I'll just have to cut the tack welds off to get the track plate off. And then uh, the bolt will just hold the link into place. Okay, that's it for the top side. I'll flip it over and show you the bottom. Okay, here's the bottom. Uh, I'll show you the cleat design. I got two designs. Uh, first design was this one. Uh, you got the center cleat that goes all the way across that is welded to the bolt and welded in the center. I only welded it on this side and this side. I don't see any purpose to weld it all the way across. That's just wasting uh, welding wire and then the bolts welded all the way around. The ends are Y-shaped. Uh, when I put this track all together, I put it on the ground and started stepping on it, and I noticed when you're stepping on it and you're teetering on the track, the track wants to teeter with you. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking when the tire rolls over it, it's going to want to teeter when it hits the beginning of the plate when it goes to the center it'll straighten out and it'll teeter again when it rolls over the other end I'm sure that's going to make some noise so I came up with a different design which is a U-shape U-shape it's pretty much flat right here the same distance as it is right here as the center cleat but when you look at the profile, they angle because this plate is lower than this plate. I'll show you what I mean. If you can make sense out of that. Okay. If you notice, when you look at this, the plate that the tire rides on, it's setting on top of the center plate so it makes it higher when I put the cleats on there uh, any cleat that's on this plate is going to be level with the center cleat but on the end it's going to point up on a little incline because to attach it it has to attach to the plate where the tire rolls on so it gives it a little incline You can also see the gap. You can see the plate where I'm setting it on top of the center plate, which are two different heights. So this cleat, I made it even all the way across as compared to this one. It's only even to the center, which is why it rocks when it hits the ground. I like this one better. Makes a more stable platform when it's on the ground. Doesn't want to teeter. As compared to this one, wants to rock.
came up with this design, a U-shape. This is the track design I'm going to use. I'm not going to use this, but it's a pretty good idea. These two are prototypes. I won't put them on a tank. I'm going to keep these as uh, mock-up samples on making jigs and piecing it together. So that's how I'm going to make the tracks. Um, like I said, I got a little problem I'm going to work out tomorrow. I'll show you a video on that. But other than that, the track plates are finished on designing and how to put them together. So, have any problems?